uh, could you give a summary benefit of store-bought milk in Australia? Mm, well, that's a big, big thing to say in Australia. There are a lot of differences between milk and in different parts of Australia. So let's just put that aside versus raw milk, if you can get it. Raw milk is always going to be superior. It's going to have all its vitamin C. It's going to have much higher lactoferrin. So lactoferrin, interferon, you know, helps with the immune system, especially with a gut immune system. So milk is really good for the gut, raw milk. Um, it will have more B vitamins. So it'll have a lot of different um, beneficial um, things that do get degraded with processed milk. So what happens with processed milk um, pasteurization, as an example? So with pasteurization, pretty much you can kiss goodbye all vitamin C. If you're on a pure carnival diet, it's probably less of a problem, less of an issue, because you're still you're going to have low blood sugar levels um, at a basal level. You'll only be taking in any small excesses from exercise or whatever through GLUT1, which doesn't require insulin, which means it leaves GLUT4 receptor completely open for vitamin C. And then you've got upregulation of intracellular antioxidants like glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase. And glutathione plays a major role in recycling vitamin C and vitamin E. So you don't need as much on a carnivore diet or a species-appropriate diet compared to a plant-based diet, which requires far more of both those vitamins. Anyway, so we put that aside. Now on the, the quality, what do you else do you potentially lose? Um, depending on whether it's hom non homo when it, whether it's been homogenized or not, or it's non homogenized, um, if I was getting any store milk, I would accept that I've I'm not you know I'm not going to get any vitamin C. I'm going to get less B vitamins. I'm going to get less substantially less lactoferrin. I'm going more for the macros. You know the my macronutrients. You know fat. Um, a protein and a bit of lactose sugar, as long as you can tolerate it. And and if, if you're only having a, cu a couple of, you know, two glasses of milk, you know, even a litre of milk um, in, uh, you know, you're probably going to get about less than 50 grams of carbohydrates. So you can still be ketosis, you can low-grade ketosis. Two glasses of milk, like half a litre, you'll be below 25 grams, that's ketosis. So it's what the Maasai do, about two glasses of milk with blood. And so they tend to be in this low-grade ketosis, doesn't affect them whatsoever. So it's an, a non-issue if people are concerned about that, unless you're guzzling liters and liters and liters, which most people won't. It's just not going to happen. Um, it's a non, non-issue even on that front. Um, so. My biggest concern is the damage to the fatty acids from homogenization. And then it varies. Different country, companies do different levels of homogenization. So if you go for the ultra high, um, you know, that sort of car in, in the cartons, that sort of milk, the ultra heated stuff and all that, that tends to be heavily heated, which ends up being, being macros, very little micronutrients. Um, other than minerals, and because uh, you know you can't destroy minerals or minerals, you know, as long as in, unless you lose them in the water, um, and that's not going to happen. It's part of the actual product, and so you you pretty much will have a a lot of um, far more damage to the actual fatty acids as a consequence of that. Not so much of the heating because. Um, fats can actually tolerate a lot of heating, but once you um, homogenize them and break up the fatty acid sort of structures, that food matrix, they are more vulnerable um, to some oxidation and some damage. Not a lot because, as I forget, there's very little PUFA and very little MUFA, uh, medium chain and, uh, um, you know, sort of the those uh, medium chain type 
fats that have got one bond, double bond, and, you know, the poofers that have got two or three double bonds, they are more vulnerable to rancidity, oxidation, aldehydes, and things like that. So milk, like all dairy, is very high in saturated fats. So it tends to have very little. It'll still just add a, it'll have trace levels. If you're on a carnival diet, can your body actually, with the um, intracellular antioxidant systems and stuff like that, can it deal with that? Possibly, more than likely. Um, you know, so it's probably not an issue, but you're adding additional um, stuff, uh, negative stuff in there that probably not a good idea. So I definitely wouldn't go for the ultra. I, I'd I'd give the um, the non the non -hom, um, the hom the homogenized stuff a, a miss. And if it's a cost or access issue, then I'd go for the non homogenized. Um, Milk, I'd go for like a, a dairy, like less of a big company. I'd go for like a smaller companies. Some of these smaller companies tend to not over-pasteurize their stuff. They don't go really ultra high heat or anything like that. Um, they use, um, uh, they do it over a lot. It's also a cost for them because they're doing less product. So they they don't go crazy, but also it means that their, their product doesn't last as long on the shelf. And you actually notice these sort of craft ones, they're sort of uh, um, uh, small boutique type um, brands tend to basically, um, the amount of days they give you is less. And that's the other thing. You look at the days and that will tell you how much pasteurization was actually involved. Um, so a product that has more days that it can actually start um, off shelf life, it means it was, at a, it was pasteurized at a much higher temperature. And that's the sort of way to gauge